Hi, I'm Dr. Todd Lizon. A few years ago, I posted a video talking about how photobiomodulation, the application of red and near-infrared light, can help with thyroid problems. And that video has garnered an awful lot of attention, a lot of emails, a lot of interest, and, I've, and there are a lot of other videos now online talking about these thyroid studies and how photobiomodulation can help get people off thyroid medication. What I have now is the 2018 follow-up study to that initial study, and that study is called Safety and Efficacy of Low-Level Laser Therapy in Autoimmune Thyroiditis Long-Term Follow-Up Study. This is important for a couple of reasons, because they followed up the exact people that were in the study, and they came to some interesting conclusions that we're going to get to as we go along. So just sit tight, and we'll come to what the actual sort of updated information is as we go. Now for those of you that are not familiar with the original study, I'd like to summarize it here um, from the perspective of how to try to mimic it at home. So what they did is they took people that were on thyroid medication and they applied the, the near-infrared light to the thyroid gland twice per week. Each time they went in, they were getting a dose of 707 joules per centimeter squared. Now, for those of you in the know, that is a lot. Typically, for skin, we're looking at 3 to 15 joules. For deeper tissues, we're looking at sort of between 20 and maybe up to 60 joules per centimeter squared. 707 joules per square centimeter. And in addition, the way that they did this is the irradiance or the power density of the LED lights, or in this situation it was a laser, but the irradiance level, get a load of this, was 17.68 watts per centimeter square. We don't measure irradiance for the most part in virtually all other studies by watts. We do it by milliwatts. So a typical irradiation um, level would be sort of between, well, you got to be at least you know, 20 or 40 milliwatts, but upwards of, say, 60 to 100 would be about the average. So this was 17.68 watts per centimeter square. So the reason I mention this, and I'm glad you've held on this long, is because in order to mimic it, we have to try to look at getting that total dose divided over time. So a cumulative dose, if you want to think of it that way. And I did a little bit of the math, and what it would basically come down to is your goal per week, if you were to mimic the study, is to be looking at, four, uh, basically it's 1,414 joules per centimeter square per week. That's the total that you're looking for, 1414. Now to get that, with a typical irradiance level of, let's just say, 100 milliwatts per centimeter square. And I know this can sound complicated for those that are not really familiar with the language, but to equate the dose, we would typically go with the, well, with the machines that you can see that I've got up here, the LED panels and the lights, the irradiance level you can get is a good solid 100 milliwatts per centimeter square. So if you were to apply that for 35 minutes on the thyroid, the actual dose you would get would be 210 joules per centimeter square. So 210 versus 707, it's not enough. So what do you do? Well, you do it daily. If you do it daily, you can get 1,470 joules per centimeter square on the thyroid per week, which is equivalent to the 1,414 joules per centimeter square of the study. So there's a little bit of an update. You can actually start to try to mimic the study, and I think that is information that will be relevant to a lot of people. The other findings that they found is what you can see up on the chart that I'm going to show up through here. And they found that while they were able to get 48% of the people that were in this study off thyroid medication, over time, when they removed the photobiomodulation, they had to go back on the thyroid medication, the thyroxine. But look at the chart here. They, the people that were in the, the active side of things, the amount of thyroid medication that they need is still essentially at the same amount that they were using all those years ago. 
So you can see on the chart it got better down here and then now they've had to increase the dose but it's still a little bit less than what they were taking before. But in the blinded side of things, in the people that didn't get the therapy, over the last number of years, look at the increase in thyroid medication they've had to take. So clearly there was a benefit there. Now they also looked to see if people were developing thyroid nodules, because this is a real issue that uh, a lot of thyroid um, problems can, can occur, is these thyroid nodules. And the amount of thyroid nodules that formed in both the active study and in the um, placebo group were the same. So from a safety perspective, there's no problem with increased thyroid nodules or anything like that when you're applying the low-level phaser. So there's a real safety factor there. And the other thing that they found is that over time, if you stop the photobiomodulation, that the antibodies, the autoantibodies, actually increase again. So when you were under the therapy side of things, these antibodies decreased. You stop the therapy and predictably the antibodies again increase with that autoimmune side of the thyroid problems. So just to summarize, decreased thyroid medication was, was required. The safety factors were there because the nodules were the same and the autoimmunity essentially comes back unless you're under therapy on a regular basis. So I just want to summarize what they actually said in this paper through here so that you can understand the actual summary that they had. And what they basically summarize it by saying is this. The results suggest that low-level laser therapy, photobiomodulation, is safe for the treatment of patients with CAT-induced hypothyroidism under the conditions specified herein and therefore subsequent, this is the important bit, subsequent applications may be considered for the purpose of maintaining or improving the obtained results. So there you have it, photobiomodulation and the thyroid. Very, very important for an awful lot of people. It might be worth your time to look into this a little bit more. Safety has been shown to be there, so mo you really don't need to worry that there could be side effects at this point that I've at least explained and that we've looked at. Photobiomodulation is very safe. They've looked at this in many, many other sort of conditions, and they have yet to find the counterindications for that where there could be problems, and it's essentially because you're mimicking nature. You typically get your photobiomodulation from the sun. So that's my update, 2019 update on thyroid function. For more information, you can always visit our websites, which you can see up here. Make sure to click the subscribe button if you're watching this on YouTube so you get all of our updates. Until next time, keep well.